Our first learning objective is to understand how fixed and variable costs behave and how to use them to predict total cost for a firm. Recall from our discussions back in Chapter 1, a variable cost is a cost whose total dollar amount varies or changes in proportion to the activity level for a firm. So as our level of output increases, our total variable cost will also increase. As we learned in Chapter 3 on activity-based costing, one of the important factors with respect to variable cost is our choice of or what we want to talk about as an activity base or cost driver. What activity is it that increases or drives an increase in our variable cost? Is it the number of units that we sell that increases our variable cost? Is it the number of hours that we run our machines that increases our variable cost? Is it the number of labor hours worked? Um, is it the miles driven, if we're talking about a car, etc.? So when we're talking about variable cost, it's important to also identify what activity-based we are talking about. For example, if we're talking about the cost of movie rentals at Redbox, our total movie rental cost depends upon the number of movies we watch and the number of days we have them outstanding. So our total Redbox expense will increase as the number of movies or DVDs that we rent increases. However, the cost per DVD per day at Redbox remains constant regardless of the number of movies that we rent. So again, summarizing, in total variable cost will increase with the level of activity, but on a per unit basis our variable cost remains constant. So again, referring back to our Redbox DVD rental example, Regardless of the number of DVDs that we rent, the cost per DVD per day remains constant at a dollar, or maybe it's a dollar twenty-five now. The amount of variable cost will differ uh, across or between firms. Uh, for example, a public utility like Florida Power and Light has large investments in uh, equipment, and they'll tend to have higher fixed costs but lower variable cost. You could think of PP&L. Uh, with their Peach Bottom uh, nuclear plant. Very high fixed cost, but variable cost at generating electricity is fairly low. Manufacturing companies, say, such as Black & Decker, will often have many variable costs associated with manufacturing and distribution of their products to their customers. Um, merchandising companies, such as Walmart, will also typically have a high proportion of variable cost, in particular the cost of the merchandise they actually sell. So for again, some examples, for a merchandising company such as Walmart, the variable cost is the cost of goods sold. For manufacturing companies, the variable costs are typically direct materials, direct labor, and then we'll have a variable portion of our overhead uh, variable in nature. Uh, merchandising and manufacturing companies, um, they're going to have variable costs consisting of sales commission, shipping cost, and other clerical costs, perhaps such as invoicing. Service companies might have variable cost in the area of travel, supplies, clerical support. In terms of our manufacturing companies, um, direct materials is a true variable cost by definition because remember it was a cost that varies directly and that we can easily trace to units of production. So as our activity level increases, as we make one more unit of our product, we also need uh, one more unit of raw materials. And so we see as our level of output increases, our total variable cost will also increase in direct proportion to that level of output or activity. A slight variation on our variable cost is something we call a step variable cost. We usually consider the employees that are working directly on our products, our direct labor, to be a completely 100% variable cost. But we also will typically have some workers in our factory whose level of activity we can't add in discrete or small chunks. We can't add, for instance, additional maintenance workers or part of a maintenance worker for every unit of activity or unit of output we produce. We sort of add um, maintenance workers in chunks. We might have our first maintenance worker. Once our level of output rises to a certain level, we'll have to add another maintenance worker, then a third maintenance worker. But the idea is the 
changes in cost respond to fairly wide changes in activity levels. But again, notice in total, as our volume or level of activity increases, our cost will also increase. And in terms of our maintenance workers, small changes in the level of production aren't likely to have a very big effect, if any, on the number of maintenance workers that we employ. As we analyze our cost behaviors, we're going to assume a linear relationship between most of our cost and our level of output. And if we were to look at The Economist uh, putting together a cost curve, we would see that the cost curve really is curve linear. It's rather steep at the beginning, then flattens out, and gets rather steep again at the end. We can think of the low levels of activity. We've got a lot of employee learning going on. There's a lot of waste, a lot of scrap, and we're rather slow at picking up on a task. Once we've produced a certain number of units, our skill set improves, and we settle down into a fairly constant amount of um, time or cost per unit of output. Once, though, we get beyond a certain level, um, we might start having our workers work overtime. They get tired. We have to pay them time and a half. Um, they might make more mistakes. But our cost, again, might start to increase. So we're going to be looking at and talking in this chapter about costs that fall within our relevant range. And that's costs that are on sort of this linear section of this cost curve. And we'll regularly talk about costs being within our relevant range. And that relevant range, again, will be the linear section of our cost curve. And within this relevant range, this linear section, we will estimate our variable cost using a linear function, y equals b plus ax. Moving on, let's go ahead now and look at our fixed cost. Our fixed cost is a cost whose total dollar amount remains constant um, as our activity level changes. So even when our activity changes and our output increases, our cost remains constant in total. So a fixed cost is a cost whose total dollar amount remains constant as the activity level changes. Think about Netflix's unlimited instant view video streaming. Typically, I think it's about $7.99 per month. And it doesn't matter the number of shows or movies we download or stream. That fixed fee remains constant at $7.99 per month. But the fixed cost per unit does go down as the activity level goes up. So as the number of movies increases, our cost per movie decreases. We've got a couple different types of fixed costs. One type of fixed cost is referred to as a committed fixed cost. These are sort of long-term in nature and cannot be significantly reduced or changed in the short term. Some examples would be depreciation or rent on buildings and equipment, real estate taxes. Then the other type of fixed cost that we often find in organizations is what we call discretionary. And these may be altered in the short term by management. Examples would be how much we spend on advertising, how much we spend on research and development. And in fact, we do see in economic downturns or recessions such as we're in right now, one of the first areas that companies cut is the amount of money they spend on advertising and research and development because the committed fixed cost, those are ongoing by contract and typically can't be changed very easily in the short term. Now in recent years, there's been an increasing trend towards organizations having a higher proportion of their cost are fixed cost relative to variable costs. For instance, H&R Block employees used to fill out tax returns for customers by hand. Now, H&R Block makes use of computer software that completes tax returns. Uh, grocery stores such as Safeway and Kroger uh, used to key in prices by hand with cash registers. Now we use scanners and barcodes to read that price information and key it in. And as machines take over many of the mundane previous tasks previously performed by uh, workers, we now have knowledge workers, and our knowledge workers are valued more for their minds rather than their muscle. They typically be are highly trained, have a certain skill set, and we'll retain them 
even the event of an economic downturn because we find they are more difficult to replace than low-skilled hourly workers. And so our workforce has become more fixed rather than variable in nature. So we could say your goal or career goal is to become a fixed cost. You want to be a knowledge worker, someone with a valuable skill who will be kept around in economic downturns rather than laid off and replaced with a new worker when an economic recovery begins. When we talk about fixed cost, it's important to keep in mind our concept of our relevant range. We can even view fixed cost as sort of step variable. The difference between a step variable cost and a fixed cost is we're talking about very wide ranges of activity. For instance, let's say we have a retail store or a warehouse or a factory. We need to, if we want to increase space, we have to rent additional chunks of space in rather large blocks. For example, if office space is available at a rental rate of 30,000 per year in increments of 1,000 square feet, as our business grows, more space is rented, increasing our total fixed cost. And again, we have to add it in large increments of 1,000 square feet. We can't just rent another 10 or 20 feet as needed. While the step function or pattern appears similar to our, again, our step variable cost, there are two important differences between our step variable and our fixed uh, cost. First, our step variable cost can often be adjusted quickly as conditions change, whereas our fixed cost can't be changed easily, certainly not in the short term. And the width of the steps for fixed cost is, again, much wider than the width of the step for our step variable costs. For instance, our maintenance workers might have steps with a width of, say, 40 hours a week. However, our fixed cost associated with, say, additional factory space would have steps with widths of over thousands or ten thousands of activity levels per week. We wouldn't add additional factory space just because we have one more uh, maintenance worker. Let's take a quick uh, concept check. Which of the following statements about cost behaviors are true? Go ahead and pause the video and think about this for a moment. The first three answers are true. Fixed costs per unit vary with the level of activity. Recall as our level of activity increases, we spread those fixed costs out over more units. Our variable costs per unit are constant within the relevant range. Again, think about your renting of movies at Redbox. Every DVD we rent costs us a dollar. and it's a constant rental per day, regardless of the number of movies we rent. And then C, our total fixed costs are constant within the relevant range. Again, our total fixed cost, think Netflix Instant View, $7.99 a month, regardless of the number of movies we download. However, item D is not true. Our variable cost um, in total increase. Um, but they are constant on a per unit basis, but variable cost in total increase, and it's only on a per unit basis that they remain constant. Now, many of our costs can be what we refer to as mixed costs. They're going to have both a fixed and variable component. For example, our utility bills often contain a fixed and variable component. We're going to incur or use a certain amount of electricity to light our factory, to heat our factory, but then as we increase the usage of our machinery, we will increase our electricity usage. So our total utility bill has a fixed component and a variable component, and this is referred to as a mixed cost. We can express our relationship or our total cost in the form of our equation of a line, y equals a plus bx, where y is our total cost. A is the slope or the intercept on our y-axis here, that's our fixed cost, and b is the slope of our line, and that's our variable cost per unit. And x is our level of activity, in this case kilowatt hours used. Let's take a look at example. If our fixed monthly utility charge is $40, and our variable cost is $0.03 cents per kilowatt hour, and your monthly activity level was 2,000 kilowatt hours used, 
then our total cost would be $100. And that's simply our fixed costs plus our variable cost per unit multiplied by the number of units, which in this case was kilowatt hours used.